I was a holdout on the air fryer for a really long time, and now it's definitely one of my favorite kitchen appliances. We are going to make an air fryer recipe. This is called Bang Bang Shrimp, and I'm really excited about this one. In this first bowl, I, I should probably tell you, in this bowl right here, I've got some shrimp. It is deveined. It has no shell. It has no tail. It's ready to go. And we are gonna be going from bowl to bowl, like in a dipping process. The recipe suggests buttermilk. We do not have buttermilk, we have regular milk, but I'm gonna add a little bit of lemon juice to this half cup of milk and make more of like a buttermilk. And while I make up the other ones, I'm gonna go ahead and just let the shrimp sit in that buttermilk. So we'll just transfer them all over into that. Honestly, this part, if you wanted to, you could do earlier in the day and just have it sitting in the milk, like even in a bag or a bowl covered in your fridge, you could do that ahead of time. All right, in this next bowl, we need cornstarch. We actually use arrowroot flour instead of cornstarch, so that's totally fine as well, but you do not use flour, it's cornstarch. We use tapioca flour, same thing. So you need about three fourths of a cup, which gets close to finishing this off. In the last bowl, we're gonna add some breadcrumbs. I'm gonna start with around a cup and we'll see if that ends up being enough. I'm gonna leave this out because if we need it, we'll have it. I am gonna add a little bit of salt to the cornstarch and you do not have to do this, but I wanna make sure that they get good flavor. Let's go ahead and take our air fryer, our air fryer basket. I'm gonna spray this so that it's ready to go. And then we will have a nice assembly line here. So this might be a little backwards the way that we're doing this but I like to have it in the buttermilk to kind of get that flavor. So what I'm doing is cornstarch, buttermilk, then panko, okay? So you're getting a nice crust on it and then it goes in your air fryer basket. Now, if you wanna do an assembly line and just go from one bowl to the other and not a back and forth, you don't have to put your shrimp into the buttermilk and leave it in there. It's just a preference thing. All right, my air fryer is preheated to 400. These are gonna go in for five minutes, then we'll flip them, and then another five minutes. Let's make up a quick sauce to go with this. I'm starting with some mayonnaise, and I'm gonna go less than the recipe calls for. It calls for a half cup, but let's just cut this around half. And then we're gonna also add some sriracha, about a fourth teaspoon, really not too much. Now, normally I would add a sweet chili sauce to this because it will be delicious with that. And normally that's something we have on hand, just not right now. So I'm gonna change up the recipe a little bit and we're gonna add this Thai red curry paste. Just a touch of that. And then I'm actually, because this is sweet, I'm gonna add a little bit of coconut aminos. So we'll see, this might not be the best sauce ever. And if that's the case, we won't have a sauce. Let's add the shrimp on top of the rice that I made. Then I'm gonna top it with the sauce and I did try it. I like it. It's not exactly like a yum yum. It's a little different. I think it's really good. And then we're gonna take some parsley for color. And my mom got these really cool scissors that are for cutting um, herbs and stuff. That's pretty cool. This looks good, y'all. Okay, I'm gonna try one of these shrimp and I'm just gonna use one of the ones that was over here on the air fry basket because these just look so pretty. The only thing I would say is to cook these eight minutes, not 10. But otherwise the flavor is good. Now, if you've had the bang bang shrimp from, what is it, bonefish? From bonefish. This sauce is different, obviously, because we didn't have the sweet chili sauce, but I think it actually would be really similar with that sauce. One thing everyone in my family tends to enjoy 
enjoy is sweet potato fries. So we're gonna make up some of those. I personally like to peel my sweet potatoes when we do this, but you don't have to. You can absolutely leave the skin on. All right, I try and cut these into wedges. I'm not usually very good at it though. So like in thirds first, and then, like I said, not really great at it, but I just try and turn my knife to and fro and uh, hope that we end up with something similar to a wedge. All right, I like to keep the seasoning on this really simple. So I'm just going with this olive oil spray. I'm going to spray them and then kind of shake them a bit so we can spray the other side as well, or kind of at least. My husband's a lot better at that than I am. Okay, spray again. And then you can use whatever kind of seasoning you like. You could make sweet sweet potato fries with some brown sugar and cinnamon, which is really good. Salt and pepper, just plain and simple, is delicious. I'm gonna be using our Auntie Nono's Everything Seasoning. It's just all in one and it's so easy to do. You really don't need much of this. A little goes a long way. Shake it up a bit. And we will cook these in the air fryer and then shake them up again. Try and get a single layer. I made a little more than will actually fit in a single layer and that's okay. These are gonna go in the air fryer. Let's do these on like 385. We're gonna start at about 15 minutes, flipping halfway through, but I think we might end up needing a little more time. All right, let's try these sweet potato fries. Grab one from the top that's not quite as hot. So easy to make, so good, so simple. Just that touch of Auntie Nono's seasoning is perfect to add some flavor to these. And that olive oil, you can also toss them in olive oil too, but I love how the air fryer gives them just a little bit of crisp on the outside. All right, tonight we're doing something I've never done before. We are going to make pork chops in the air fryer. I'm a little nervous. We might not have a protein with dinner, but let's just see how this goes. Okay. So I have four pork chops here that I have patted dry. So these are thawed, they're dry, they're ready to go. We are going to coat these in a grilling seasoning. Seasoning. Use whatever kind of seasoning you prefer. If you just like salt and pepper, paprika, something like that, go with that. I'm just gonna use a grilling seasoning because we have some. Okay, so not only am I gonna put the grilling seasoning on there, but we're going to like kind of press it in, make sure it's more like a rub and we are going to flip it and we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. So I wanna make sure these have really good flavor. That is one thing, I've never been a huge fan of pork chops and I think it's because a lot of times they end up dry, but we are gonna prevent that tonight, okay? We're gonna make really good pork chops. I'm gonna, we're gonna do it, it's gonna happen. Okay, let's transfer these to the air fry basket. I'm gonna have to be a little strategic with how I put these in there. Because I would love if they would all fit. I think they will. It is a pretty decent size air fryer basket. These are gonna cook on 375 for 12 to 15 minutes. These are a little thicker, so I'm probably gonna go more toward the 15 minute mark and we'll flip around seven minutes. I feel like these are gonna be good. Let's take them over to the air fryer and get them started. While our pork chops are in the air fryer, let's mix up the sauce that's gonna go on the top of them. You need about a fourth cup of maple syrup. This is the one that we always use, it's from Sam's Club. And then we're gonna add some Dijon mustard. You need two tablespoons. I actually love the Trader Joe's version, but we don't have any of that one right now. So I'm gonna add that. Let's get a spoon out ready to go. I'm gonna add about two teaspoons of lemon juice. Not much, let's do just a touch more. And then we're gonna top this with just a bit of salt, just a pinch. Mix all of this together. And then this will be ready to serve over our pork chops when those are done. Yeah. 
All right, we're taking these out. I'm gonna set them on the serving plate and pour this sauce all over it. And then they need to rest for three to five minutes before we serve. Okay, let's add some parsley to the top for color. This looks really good, but obviously we need to cut it open and see. Okay, the inside is glistening. I like that, I like seeing that. Let's see how it tastes. I'm just gonna taste a little piece and then we are going to sit down for dinner. All right, this is pretty good. I really like the sauce on the top. It is not overcooked in my opinion. You got that nice like glistening look, glistening look when you cut into it, which is what you wanna see. This is pretty good, I'm impressed. And historically, I've not been a huge fan of pork chops. Bone in, absolutely, boneless. Never been a huge fan of them, but this, this recipe is good. We are going to make these cinnamon French toast roll-up things. They look really interesting. The recipe calls for white bread, but we are going to be using, it's, it's kind of a white bread, but it's the Dave's Killer bread, which actually seems more like a wheat bread to me. We're gonna use this one and I think it's gonna be fine. Before we do anything else, let's make up our butter mixture. You need about four tablespoons of butter. I probably have closer to three here. I'm gonna melt it. It doesn't need to be all the way melted, but just really softened. All right, so not completely melted, but pretty much almost melted there. All right, I've got my tablespoon measure, and we are going to add, okay. I've got my tablespoon measure. We're gonna add two tablespoons of brown sugar into our butter. And we just need a pinch of salt in that. So let's just mix that together. And I'm gonna let this sit to the side. It might firm up a little bit, like coming back to, you know, at like a more stick butter consistency, and that's totally fine. All right, now in this bowl, we want to go ahead and make our dipping mixture. Now for this mixture, I'm starting with three eggs or gold, if you've been to the grocery store lately. I'm going to add two tablespoons of heavy cream. You can use milk or half and half. I just happen to have heavy cream in the fridge, so I figured we would go with that. Let's just do like two and a half tablespoons because I did use an extra egg. And I'm gonna add a touch of vanilla extract. Feel free to use almond. You guys know we love almond extract. So you need, really it calls for two teaspoons, so that, you know, a touch-ish. Let's whisk all of this together and then we'll just set it to the side so that's ready to go. Our butter mixture will be ready to go and we'll move on to the roll-ups. Now for this part, it's probably best that you have a rolling pin. If you don't, you can probably do it without one, but if you have a rolling pin, that's what I would use. Oh, and you know what else? I need to get out a bowl because we are gonna be cutting the crust off of this bread, and but I don't want it to go to waste, so we're gonna end up making a breakfast casserole later on. I, it probably, I don't know, it might be on camera, we'll see. And we are just gonna take the rolling pin and start to roll each piece of bread out. It doesn't have to be perfect, just kind of flattening it out a bit. And then cut off your edges. And I'm gonna do this more of like an assembly line. So he, you could do this and then go ahead and do your dipping and then move it to your air fry basket. But I'm just gonna go ahead and make a stack of these and then we'll do all of that other stuff at the same time. So I'm also thinking that this could potentially be a good freezer breakfast idea. One thing we really enjoy making in our house is French toast sticks. It's something where my kids can get up in the morning and they can make their own breakfast very easily. 
they can pull the French toast sticks that I've already made out of the freezer and just reheat them on their own, which is a huge help to me. And usually they'll just serve it with some, you know, piece of bacon or sausage or whatever breakfast meat I have prepped for the week. But I feel like these will end up being a great option. We'll test that out and see if we have any left. I don't know if we will. So we are actually gonna have these for dinner tonight. We're having breakfast for dinner, which is something that we do enjoy doing. Okay, this is how this is gonna work. We're going to spread the butter on the bread, roll it up, dip it in the egg mixture, and then it's gonna go over to the air fry basket. Let's do this. So this is kind of like the inside of a cinnamon roll, you know? Let's just sprinkle with a little bit of cinnamon. You don't need much. We're gonna roll it up, which like I said, if you're using like a really fresh white bread, it's gonna roll very easily. Since mine is more like a white wheat, it's a little harder to roll. It shouldn't be too much of an issue, but just FYI. All right, we'll dip this in the egg mixture. Let's move the egg mixture a little closer to this and then that will go into the air fry basket. Okay, quick tip already. My suggestion would be to go ahead and get all your butter on all of these, roll them, dip them all at the same time because otherwise you're just washing your hands in between each one and that's a lot. Okay, let's take these over to the air fryer. They're going in at 350 degrees for around eight to 10 minutes. This is your friendly public service announcement reminding you to spray your air fryer basket before you do this because I just thought I would flip them, you know, after they've been in there for a bit. They don't look quite as pretty as I wish they did. Okay, these look beautiful. Let's give them a taste. I'm gonna taste one of these ones on the bottom. These are delicious. They would make the perfect breakfast. Obviously, we're having them for dinner, but they would make a great dessert too. It's a cross between French toast and a cinnamon bun. The flavors are so good. I'm telling you, they are so good. You definitely need to make these. The only suggestion is just, just spray. Use some spray on your air fryer. We are gonna make some hush puppies in our air fryer using Jiffy Mix. I'm cutting this recipe in half just based on what we need. So let's take half of this Jiffy Mix box here and we're just gonna pour it into a bowl. Because I'm cutting this recipe in half, I only need about an eighth cup of flour. If you were doing the full recipe with the full box, you would want to go with a fourth cup. So let's add that to the Jiffy Mix. Now the recipe calls for just a fourth teaspoon of garlic powder. So I'm gonna be using about an eighth. And so really not much at all. Because I am not gonna be adding onion to ours, you absolutely can add onions. I'm gonna add onion powder. So again, just about an eighth teaspoon or so. And then cayenne pepper is optional. And I mean, I am gonna go the absolute tiniest bit of cayenne pepper in here, okay? Let's take our whisk and just whisk these ingredients together. So the recipe calls for one third cup of milk. So because of that, I'm going to just do half of this cup, half-ish. That should be pretty good. And it calls for one egg, so because I need to do half, I'm just gonna add an egg white. I'm also starting to get a little nervous because we eat a lot of eggs, like a lot, and we haven't gotten our chickens yet. We have a coop, but no chickens, and I cannot find eggs in the grocery store at all. So, I mean, we might not be having eggs coming up here. You know what, I'm not gonna add regular onion, but I am gonna add a touch of green onion. It just needs that, hush puppies need that. Mix all of this together, let's just combine it. I'm not gonna add jalapeno this time, but that's a great optional ingredient along with the um, onion. So 
The recipe says to just let the mixture sit for a couple of minutes. So I'm just gonna set it to the side and then we will preheat the air fryer and then that will be ready in a few minutes. All right, my mixture has been sitting for about five minutes while the air fryer preheats. I'm gonna be using my scoop here. This is a one and a half tablespoon scoop and we are just gonna place the, I'm just gonna scoop it onto this, it, onto my air fryer basket. But I did line it with parchment paper just as a precaution. Try and get them all around the same size. This half box actually made a lot more than what I thought it was gonna make. They smell really good. Okay, these are gonna go in for a total of six minutes. We will flip them when there's about one or two minutes left though. All right, these are going with dinner tonight. I did flip them when we had about a minute left, but these actually took about nine minutes versus six minutes. So I think depending on the size, keep that in mind. Let's put them here in a serving bowl. Little biscuits, hush puppies. Let's try this little piece here. Okay, that's pretty good. Really simple, really easy to put together. Hmm, okay. I'm gonna let my husband try them when he gets home, but it's very um, dry like a hush puppy is, but with good flavor. I like this. I'm gonna make up some honey butter. Our verse this week comes from Psalm 143, eight. Let me hear in the morning of your steadfast love, for in you I trust. Make me know the way I should go, for to you I lift up my soul. If you enjoyed this video, I suggest that you check out the video above and thanks so much for watching.